I wanted to explain this part of the actual sealing up of the valve first. This is the actual seat and guide machine that I use to cut seats. Um, anyway, I've cut this one. This is an LS3 head, but this same principle applies to them all. This is not a stock casting, by the way. Anyway, what we have here is I've cut the valve job on this, and we've got the guide here. Now, here's the thing. A bit valve will conform to this because this seat cannot, I mean, it, it's not supposed to move. There are times where this seat itself will walk. So in other words, you know, from deformity or the seat wasn't pressed in on the way it can move. It's also if there's not a material on it, but that part's actually extremely rare. For the most part, that seat's locked in place. So when a valve, if this seat's out of round initially, the valve will try to conform to it, but if it's hitting all the, and this is usually what happens, it hit all the way here, but not through this center part. So it's, it can't just flex over into that because it's hitting on, you know, about 270 degrees of its rotation. So in that case, it's leaking and you know, it will not seal. So the valve will not conform to that. So the bad valve job, the valve will not conform to, even with the good spring on it. So don't get me wrong, regular springs will take up some of the slack if it's a little out, but if you've got enough where it's coming through here, a uh, spring will not make that up. So, but one of the tests I like to do, and I point this out only, I need to back up, point this out because if a valve is bent, it could still conform. So when it's coming this way and it's bent, it still can wobble into it and set itself straight. This seat, when the valve is perfectly straight, it's not gonna be, the valve itself is not gonna straighten the seat, okay? But the seat will straighten the valve slower, sort of around the, where the seat is sitting. Um, just want to point that out. Now, I do want to show you this. This is a good test. You don't even need fancy equipment to determine if your valve job's um, straight or not. And, but it's only one test. Don't take it as the only test. Of course, there you are. It's called the balance test. You see, the guides are supposed to be straight. And what's supposed to happen is that the valve, when I drop this, will come and will hit the valve seat and it'll bounce up and it's eventually stop. If the valve seat, that's this part, is out of round, in other words, it's sideways like this, this valve guide straight. If it comes down and it's sideways, it will just thud, it will, won't bounce. So watch this. That bounce is what you want to hear because it means at least it's enough around. Now, it's not a guarantee. It's a, that's a good, that's one good sign. I have many good signs you need to have. If you were taking some very fine lapping compound right now, you could lap it in to make sure because several times that will bounce correct but it won't seal because um, there's chatter in it or something else um, that's causing it not to seal. And the lapping compound will show that up. Now, here's what's interesting. This is the proper way to do a vacuum test. But... So, no spring on it, balance is correct. This is the vacuum tester I showed you before. Now today, I think it pulls like 22 inches, we'll see. 22. Yeah, Pete. Usually I have it like 21. If it pulls one less than peak, that's good because there's no seal on it and there's just gravity holding the valve down. And the lighter the valve, the less press it has on the seat. So I'm gonna put it over this. I gotta warn you, I gotta put my finger underneath because there's a hole in this rocker boss. If we look, it's going to 21. That's a good one. If I had another hand, I'd turn it off right now and you'd see it slowly go down. So I'm gonna. There, that's what should have sealed up. If I had done that with the bent valve head that you saw there, one, it would have stopped. Like it would have gone all the way down, but it would not have bounced. Indication clear that it's bent anyway. So just something else, a little thing to help you. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Today's video is a video about valve sealing. Um, how the valves actually seal and what's involved with that and try to explain why that bent valve actually sealed in that head. So this video is gonna have a lot of stuff with it. Before I do that, I'm gonna give a little disclaimer. Um, and I'm gonna back up just a tad, just to kind of explain. I did that amateur head pointing analysis, and at the very beginning I said, you know, I'm gonna give you my opinions, you're my opinions, you're welcome to your own opinions, don't take this as gospel. Well, I think many people just skipped that whole part and went right to it and thought what I said was law and the wor way of the world, and this is the absolute facts which they are facts to me. So it isn't like I made any of that stuff up, but 
Um, the thing is, everybody has their own opinion on the way the head parting works. You can go to two different head parters and the heads will be similar but not the same. So when I say this stuff, I want you guys to understand, I know you, this. There's a few things in life I can guarantee I know is gonna happen. I'm gonna have to pay taxes, the sky's blue, and that not everybody hears the same thing from the same words. So when I'm doing this video, I want you to remember this. I'm gonna give you my opinions, and these are from years of experience, doing things, finding mistakes, and so on and so forth. Um, these are facts that I have come across. However, they, they, the absolute scientific facts is the best way ever. No, probably not. But these are what's worked for me, and this is what my experience is, and I'm just sharing it with you. You can say, well, this guy doesn't know anything, and you can just forget everything you ever heard that I've said, or you could take it, uh, take it and use it and see if it works for you and whatnot. So, but this is from years of experience, so I'm gonna tell you a bunch of stuff. So we'll get started. Um, so today's video, I'm gonna actually tell how a actual valve seals on the head, and I'm gonna get all the way back to how that valve that was bent sealed. Now you're gonna learn a lot of stuff that you may not have even known about. So let's go ahead and get started. By the way, there'll be a bunch of cuts in here because I have to use both my hands and someone's gotta hold the camera. All right, we're gonna start right here with a couple of little basic facts. Now, some of you already know this stuff and some of you don't. Um, cylinder heads have a guide that's located right here. And this is our valve job. And we'll get back to this in a minute. But the only angle that really matters for the valve job is right here. This is your 45 degree seat. Now, it's not always 45 degree, and we'll talk about the different seat angles in a minute. But this one's the only one that's responsible for sealing. The rest of these angles are for flow, both wet and dry. So that's what they help out with. This one's the only one that's really responsible for sealing. So this one is what the valve actually makes contact with, and this help is the one that causes for sealing. Now let's talk about the guide. So here's a guide. This is what they look like. This one's actually for 11 30 second stem, but this is what a guide looks like. Quite simply, the valve runs inside of it, just like so. Now here's the thing. We have to give some kind of space in between the valve and the guide itself because otherwise, if it was perfectly tight, the valve couldn't move because it'd be grabbed. So we leave some kind of clearance for a couple of reasons. One, we leave it so that there's some kind of oil film in here so that the valve can have some lubrication for it because metal on metal contact causes them to seize and they stop. Two, all metals have an expansion rate. Some expand faster than others. Aluminum, for instance, it's you know far more expansive than steel. So what happens is through the heating or cooling of the head, and I'll give you both scenarios in a second, this valve guide will get pinched down or loosened up and the valve will either expand or contract um, to change the actual clearance in the guide. So we have to have some kind of clearance in there so that the valve moves back and forth freely. I'm gonna give you two scenarios where things go wrong with this. First off, most people don't think about this, but when a head's cold, like out in the, it's cold. So like extremely cold, we'll go winter. It doesn't even have to be extremely cold, but in the colder times, you can actually have a valve get grabbed. And you might say, how does it get grabbed? Well, the aluminum itself is going to shrink because it's getting colder. And when it does, the aluminum that's grabbed onto the guide will pinch this guide and squeeze it down and it's gonna squeeze that valve and cause a little bit of tightness. Now you might say, there's no way that could happen. All right, so it sounds like it's an impossible thing, but here's the thing. On intake guides, you can run at a tighter clearance. On exhaust guides, we typically can run a looser clearance. However, the tightest I've ever seen a guide was about six, ten six tenths of one thousandths. Considering a regular piece of paper is only about three thousandths thick, that's pretty tight. So I know you're thinking, well, there's no way aluminum could squeeze that guide. Well, if you've only got a few tenths of a thousandths that's in here for clearance and it shrinks up, it shrinks up just enough, it will have, and it will tighten it up just enough where it will stick. So we all know some guy that goes out there, starts up his car and instantly gives it help. Well, one, there's no lubrication yet in the, well, there is some, but there's not as much lubrication inside the guide. It shrunk up enough and it usually sticks open the valve and then it sticks, breaks, everything goes wrong. The second scenario has to do with heat. This usually happens more on the exhaust side than it does in the intake. The intake usually stays cooler because we've got a cooler air charge that goes over it. On the exhaust side though, all that exhaust heat goes out through the valve. So the valve's taking all that heat. The only way it can 
it get rid of the heat. So when it touches the head, the seat will actually transfer some of the heat away from the valve and into the head. The rest of it's all in the stem. So we can lose here some where it contacts the guide to cool off some. But this metal on the valve is gonna be hotter than the head. So this will expand faster than that guide can. So in that case, you get too hot on the exhaust the ex and there's not enough clearance, the valve will expand, it will make contact and it's locked in and it sticks a valve. Neither scenario is great. So there's that. Because of that, we have clearances we set for them. Now, usually I think AFRs is like 1.8 to 2.2 and they vary. Each manuf manufacturer varies a little bit in those tolerances, but that's about right. Which I know you're thinking, well, that doesn't seem like very much. So how does it able to make all that movement? Well, I'm going to show you this real quick. What I've set up here, I'm having my son move the camera over here. I set up this valve and this gauge. So it's in the guide now. It's going to be a little bit up and I've got a little gauge here. Hopefully he's capturing the gauge. I want you to see how much movement it has. So that's 90. That's 10. That's almost 20 thousandths. Now remember, this has only got two and a half thousandths of clearance. The further open that valve is, the more it's gonna move in that guide. So it's gonna move more the farther open it gets. So that's a naturally occurring thing and it happens, right? It, it just is how it is. If the guides were absolutely held it as straight as it could be, and you only had a thousandths or so, we could actually make these two valves much closer. In other words, I should be able to run a much bigger intake valve next to that exhaust valve, but we can't. Usually the minimum clearance between the intake and exhaust is 30 thousandths on a wedge head. The reason being that cause, because that valve can move over, that valve can move over and they can clip each other. So we gotta have some kind of clearance. So that hopefully explains that there is movement in the guide and it has to be that way. That's why you can have it. Now the second thing that caused that valve to seal up is these valves seem sturdy and thick and stuff. They're not. In a running engine, this is a noodle. And I know you're like, no, it's not steel. I mean, it's, it's stiff. You can watch some of the Spintron testing videos where they have the, in, the engine and they have a close-up slow motion camera of the spring. You'll see the top of the valve and the whole valve is actually dancing around. It's a noodle inside that guide. So it's going to have deflection too. So just from as it is, you saw 20 thousandths happening on that guide. You get this thing flexing and it's moving around even more and it's able to change that shape. So that has a lot to do with it. Um, and explains this. Now you might say, well, why don't we make a thicker stem then? Well, that's a disadvantage because the thicker stem will make the valve much thicker and sturdier, but it also makes it way more and that's harder for valve control. So it's a compromise. Now, the reason why I'm over here on the seat and guide machine is it explains some of this, um, how they actually seal up. So let me just pause this video for just a second so I can give my son a chance to rest his arms. Okay, so let's get to the two parts of the ceiling. If you understand now that the valve itself can move, which it does in the guide, and it also flexes, this part's going to move. The part that shouldn't move and usually doesn't is the valve seat itself. This part, because it's in the aluminum, and if it's done right, it's sitting on the register, it's sitting and it's not, it doesn't have any give to give. It will move some, but it's not as much, near as much as would say the valve, for instance. Now there are some worst case scenarios where the seat isn't all the way in and it can walk or if it's not put in improperly installed, things can happen. And aluminum can shift a little bit during the first operations when it's taking its heat cycle and those can move. But that still isn't near the movement of a valve. So the reason why I say that is because a valve that's bent can contact the seat, which is perfectly round, and it can bend itself back straight. The reverse can't happen. So you can't have a nice straight valve and a bad valve job and that valve will conform to it. And you're like, yes, it can. Let me explain. When the valve's bent, say even a little quarter, this part will hit and it will flex itself straight. What happens with the bad valve job is what you'll see is, and this one's actually fine, so I can't show you in this. It will seal, watch my fingers, from here all the way to here. And this little section, usually right in this area, will not seal. So in other words, that straight valve actually hits this part, which is straight, but this is under it. So we're making perfect contact here, but this part's not making contact with the valve. It's not sealing. That valve's not gonna whoop, warp over to that. So if the head's out around, the straight valve's not fixing it. 
especially like that. And there's other cases too where you can actually have chatter. That's where there's these marks or where it skips sections. But for the most part, it's round. So the valve's making contact, but there's spots where it's dipped in or lower. It's not sealing up. That happens a lot. So um, I'm telling you this because it's a lesson for cylinder heads itself. Because a lot of times you think, hey man, if the you just this showed that if that bent valve can seal up, then a bad valve job made up with a bent valve or with a straight valve, it can't. This doesn't have near as much give as the valve does. And I just kind of showed you that. Here's a test that I do. So the one to show if it's actually sealing up properly. So the first thing I'll do is I'll cut a valve job just like this one's cut. Now there's probably still some grime on it or whatnot, but we'll see what happens. Um, first thing I'll do is I'll cut a valve job. I'll take the valve and what I wanna do is I'm gonna drop it in. And what I wanna hear is a bounce because as the valve hits this, if things are straight or perpendicular to the guide, so they got the guides drawn straight up, the valve's going this way, but if it hits it perfectly and it's straight, it will bounce. If this valve job's like kick this way, and I'm doing extremes, what'll happen is it'll hit and thud. So it'll go thump, and it won't bounce. So what you wanna hear is something like this. That's a bounce that you wanna hear. That usually means the valve job's at least round. Now it doesn't mean it's necessarily sealed up, but that's one good indication. Because like I said, you can have it seal from here all the way to here, and it'll bounce just like that. But this section right here can still have a low spot and it won't seal. Bounce perfect, won't seal. So here's how I test it. So I, all I did was drop it in. There's no springs on it whatsoever. So this is where I use my vacuum gauge. So each day it's kind of different, depends on the air pressure. But put my thumb over so I get my max reading, which looks to be about 21-ish today. So I'm gonna put over the port. I'm gonna warn you, I gotta put my hand underneath the block of rocker hot stud because it's got a hole there. So he looks low, watch this. Rocker stud. Now I'm gonna ask Bishop to come over here and turn off this air. He's working his way there. Now if you notice, it's 20 and a half. That's a half pound less than perfect. Now watch as he turns it off. It does go down quicker than you saw with the stem on it. And the reason for that is because there's no, there's clearance in the guide. There's no seal on it. That's it. So that's actually a pass. Bounces, it pulls vacuum. That's a good valve job. That's one way for us to see if it seals. As you could tell, this one has no pressure on the valve. The only thing that's got pressure on it is gravity and the weight of this valve. That's all that's keeping it sealed. That's when you could tell it's good because that's, that's a good sealed up job. But anyway, let's go back to the actual head that's got the bit valve and see if we can't figure out how it actually sealed up and what actually happened. All right, this is the head with the bent valve stem. Now, if you look at it, I've got the light on the back of it, which I know you probably can't really see, but it's sealed off completely. Now watch, what I'm gonna do, and someone actually pointed this out, this has been very good. Uh, they were a good listener, but if I drop this valve right now, like if I did just that head test you just saw me do, it would only hit once, it will not bounce. So right now it's sealed up, but if I was to turn that valve, and I'm turning it, and hopefully you'll start seeing it, see this big old gap open like this. This is what most of you see and you're like, that's why it doesn't seal up. And hopefully he's getting the light coming through. See that big old gap? Let me see if we can't get the, there we go. See that big old light coming through and watch me close it off. Boom. So that's because the valve was bent and then it got straightened and we'll show how it actually made contact and so on and so forth in just a second. But that's what's happened. If I was to drop this valve, it would only hit once. It would be an indication that it wasn't great. So there's that to think about. So let's go ahead and pull out the valve and let's talk about how it could seal like this um, with it like that. This is the valve. Now, if you look at the stem, it gives away where it was making contact. You see how it's shiny right through here? And I'm hoping the light captures it great. Shiny here and then kind of dull through this. That's the indication where it was actually touching the stem. Now I'll go ahead and warn you, I've tried recording this. I'm not sure how well this is gonna do, but that's the hole right there. And I've tried before and you can see the guide. There's not, it doesn't really look that bad. Let me explain why. I can still see some of the crosshatch, actually a lot of it. Um, so I'm not so worried that the guide's worn out. I've also measured it and it's still, uh, you know, it's about the same, it's within a couple tenths. So probably because you didn't run it very long, the longer you run it, obviously it's wearing right here. This is going to wear the guide itself there at the bottom, and then it's going to end up fat at the bottom, skinny at the top, and probably fat at the other end as well. 
So here's how it's sealed. The guide actually grabbed it here and the valve actually hit the seat here. The, sp the spot that took the most of the bin was right here. So if you kind of think about it like this, here's my little modeling clay. Essentially, it made itself into an S. So the seat hit this way and when it got pulled up, it straightened itself in the guide just enough. Because remember, that guide's got a lot of clearance in it anyway, like I already showed you. Even though it's like only a few thousands, really that's 20 thousands of head movement. So that straightened itself up and it ends up looking something like this, like a little S. And this is how this one actually looks in a much smaller, less dramatic way. That's how it was able to seal. Now, most of you are used to whenever you see a bent valve, it looks like this and it doesn't seal. Well, the reason why this one did is because it hadn't got to that point. So eventually what would happen is it keeps moving up in the guide. When it's bent like this, it's gonna stay in that one position because it's gonna wear in the guide that way until eventually it moves. And it's going to move, it's just a matter of time, it's going to turn. Then, just like I showed you when I had it spinning in the valve, in the seat itself, it's gonna move and it will not be sealed anymore. You're gonna backfire through the intake and there'll be obvious signs. Or worst case, it's gonna snap off the valve head before it does that and it's all over. So that's how it was able to seal that way. Hopefully that gives you some insight into why it actually sealed. So the part that took it up was right here. Cause if you think about it too, this is an eight millimeter stem, this is also undercut. So this is by far the thinnest. Several of you have seen, by the way, this isn't always, so it depends on how severe the bend is too. So I've seen it as well, just like you saw just a second ago. If it had made more contact or more bend on the valve, what you would have saw was it would have bent so much that it would have started bending this part that actually makes contact with the guide and it wouldn't have been able to go up all the way in the guide. Then it wouldn't have sealed no matter what. A lot of times that's what happens. So in other words, the valve gets bent like this and it can only go in so far and it's stuck. It will not go up any further. Now it can keep coming open, but it can only close a certain amount. We've seen that. That will not seal. He, in this scenario, is one of the rare times where things were just, and this, by the way, happens more than you think. This is one of those rare scenarios where it touched, but it didn't bend bad enough to stick in the guide and cause that to happen. In a way, he got lucky. Probably if it made a little bit more contact, bent a little bit more, it couldn't have gone all the way up in the guide and it wouldn't have sealed. And it'd been the case like many of you are used to, instead of saying, no way that can happen. Because that was many of the comments, there's no way that's happening. Bit valve cannot seal. And if I hadn't had it happen to me, I wouldn't believe it either. And I'm gonna go over a couple of more things just to kind of help you out. I drew a little picture to kind of help with the seat angle stuff. This is a 90 degree angle, half of a 90 degree is 45. Most valve jobs are 45, now not all. We've got a 50 degree valve job, a 55 degree, a 60 and 65. Have I used these two? No. This one on the highest end stuff, this one's pretty common for me, but I probably do use more 45s. The 45 degree angle, just like it is there, that's this angle right here and here. That's the seat. The valve also has to be cut at a 45 degree angle. It acts like a wedge. So when the valve comes down, it smacks those sides. That's how it's sealing up. Boom, hits that. Now, here's why valve jobs wear out. The guides. As it moves in this guide, remember, it's like a noodle. It's going to wedge. So I'm going to get my son to hold my camera real quick. And I can kind of show you what's happening and how guides or how valve jobs actually can wear out. All right, this is a horrible job of explaining, but I'll do my best I can. Think of it like a V-block. Now, the valve's coming in the guide. And we like to think it hit here. Even just hitting here, it's rubbing the seat each time it hits. So eventually metal rubbing on metal, it's gonna wear out. That's how the seat itself can wear out. So the valve jaw can become worn out. Now, the only thing that's providing any lubricant is the fuel. And if you've ever seen like a natural gas engine, they don't have the same uh, lubrication abilities as gasoline. So their seat's constantly hitting. There is no lubrication at all and they wear out much faster. So what happens is it sinks further into the seat and it keeps sinking further. And before long, it sharpens these edges. The other way is if the guide starts wearing out from improper geometry, that would cause the valve, remember it's a noodle anyway, it actually might open like a wiggle, come down, it's gonna hit and then rub into place, rub into place, rub into place. And eventually each one of those rubs, when the guide gets more worn out, it's bound to wear out the valve job because now the valve's moving more. So a loose guides will cause the valve job to wear out so much quicker because it comes in like this and straightens out when it hits the seat. That's every time it rubs that way, it's wearing out the valve job. 
every time. So it's a natural occurrence, but the tighter the guide, usually the longer the valve life. But like I said, there's compromises, which we've already talked about. So let's go back to the seat angle. The thing about the different seat angles is these are steeper. So you can think of 45s that might be like this. And as you get narrower with each steeper valve angle. So it's much easier to, to much harder, as I should say, to pound this valve into a wedge that looks like this instead of one that's more straight, like this. So it'd be much easier to come in when it's a much steeper angle. So that's how these are. So the disadvantage of these sharper angles is um, they are straighter coming this way. So typically they do flow more at the higher lifts but they will wear out the valve job faster because it's much easier for the valve to sink into that. Some, just an idea on to help you out with that. Now, in general, if you go from 45 to 65 degree valve jobs, you're sweeping this way. The peak flow, like the flow at the higher lifts goes up as the valve um, angle becomes steeper. As you go less, the lower lift flow picks up. So that's in general though. Most of you will be at a 45 degree seat angle. That's the most common for everything else. Now there's always some, and I almost want to have a huge battle on this, that argues you should do a 30 degree valve angle because that really helps out low lift flow. Pontiacs did it back in the day. Um, that really helps low lift flow when they had flat tap at cams and the max of 400 lift. Um, do not do that. The only other reason to have a 30 degree valve job or something less than 45 is when you've got a lot of pressure, say for instance, the diesels. I know diesels are real popular with like a 37 degree valve job. And that's because we've got like, you know, 75 pounds of pressure on them and they got all this pressure and there's a lot of heat build up in it anyway. So they give it more contact area and a tighter wedge so it's not trying to sink the valves in. So in diesels, it's a little bit different situations. Most of our gas stuff, even if you're running turbo or whatnot, 45 is fine. I, there's no need to do 30. And if you think you're helping out your head by putting a 30 degree valve job in it, you ruined it. Uh, most modern heads do not need a 30 degree valve job. You know why Pontiacs also had it? Have you seen their chamber? Their chamber literally comes valve job off. That's your chamber. Instead of a modern valve job, modern chamber where you have the valve job and then we swoop out, nope, flat. So of course having a flatter angle here helps with the air transition. This is not a good design. That's better by the way I'm talking about this curve here. So anyway, the last picture I have for you is some of the guides. This is one of the weird things that can also mess up ceiling. Kind of sucks. These are kind of horrible drawings of guides. That one's going to be real hard for you to see. But sometimes what you have here is a guide that's been mis... It's been um, sized or sized correctly. Like you'll measure in the center of the tightest part and it's, and it's correct. But the outsides are fat. And this causes the valve to wobble more at the ends because then it could teeter-totter on this little spot in the center. See this a lot. This happens sometimes when you um, don't ream the valve right and you're like, oh, reamers go straight. Uh, trust me, you can have someone mess that up, guaranteed. You can also have it where you have a wear pattern where it's like a banana shape, which I'm kind of trying to draw. What happens is it's really fat here and really fat here and it's kind of like a curve. So when the valve drops, it kind of goes at an angle almost a little bit and then when it, it will not bounce. And it's not because the seat's round, it's because the guide can't let it go straight. In those cases, usually you pop out the guide, put a new one in, make sure the hole's straight. This happens from wear too. Also bad valve train geometry. So if you have like the rocker wrong link push rod and it's wearing more on one side, it tries wearing out the top of the guide. So this part gets real fat. Well, if it gets fat here, it's gonna allow the valve to move more at the bottom. And eventually it's gonna wear this part at the bottom out and then it wears out the valve job. There are many times where guides get the blame. They're like, oh, these piece of crap guides and this horrible material, and they wore out after 100 miles. They didn't wear out after 100 miles. Your geometry was bad. You wore them out. But so a lot of things get the blame that really aren't the case. So don't get me wrong. You can have bad guide material and they just don't last. But if your valve train's geometry is bad, you're going to wear out the guide. And just like I told you, that moves the valve more, which wears out the seat more. This is probably a longer video than you wanted. And there's probably a lot of you like now being keyboard commandos. I got to tell them what he's did wrong. Remember, these are my opinions. You're welcome to your own. Hopefully it gives you a lot of stuff to think about and learn. So thanks for watching this video. Remember, I'm no Superman. You guys take care.